let me let us start our presentation. So, uh, we will share the screen. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Great. Yes, yes I can see it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So, uh, thank you for inviting us to the committee meeting and taking time for us to introduce ourselves. We'll introduce our open source project, uh, Muse, a unikernel for running Wasm. Uh, we are working on the project as a selected initiative and uh, the Mito project. The Mito project is a government-backed initiative in Japan that encourages students to explore new ideas and areas. The aim is to foster technical innovation and entrepreneurship among young talents in Japan. Now, uh, first, let me introduce ourselves. I'm Soichiro Ueda, a Japanese student in Kyoto. I love system software. Hello, my name is Ainozaki from Tokyo. Uh, I love system software too and monomorphic encryption and CUDA. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, uh, moving on to our main topic. Uh, now, a lot of Wasm runtimes have emerged. For example, uh, Wasm Edge, W3, Was0, and Wasmer. But most of them run on general purpose operating systems, such as Linux, uh, Windows, or Mac OS. We believe the missing piece is here. Why don't we have an operating system specialized for existing Wasm? This is the our approach. We are developing a minimal kernel required for existing Wasm. By doing so, we realize a kernel specialized in running Wasm. This kernel can run only one Wasm application inside of it. And a kernel composed in this manner is commonly referred to as a unikernel. This execution approach represents an entirely novel paradigm for WebAssembly. And we think this will facilitate the utilization of Wasm in the cloud. Now we'll explain what is a unikernel. A unikernel is a way of compose a kernel. There are two characteristics of a unikernel. First, a unikernel has only one process. This feature reduces the overhead of context switch. And second, it integrates application codes and kernel codes by statically linking them together. So the application runs in kernel mode, and this reduces the overhead of system calls. And it is proposed to directly exact unikernels uh, composed in this way on virtual machines in the cloud. And this will optimize the exception of applications in the cloud. Now, let's thinking of running Wasm as a unikernel. Conventional unikernels were designed to be linked with the application source code, but our design link wasn't binary instead of application codes with kernel codes and turn it into a kernel image. This enables to integrate Wasm and kernel implementation and run it without other operating systems. This is the fundamental idea underlying our project. And interestingly, when linking Wasm binary and kernel calls, WASI works as interface between Wasm and kernel calls. WASI enables linking WebAssembly with unikernels. That's why we think Wasm and unikernels are well suited for each other. We'll now explain the detailed design of it. So let's see architectures of Muse. Muse architecture consists of three components, and I will introduce each of them. First is Muse, unikernel for running Wasm. As shown in the picture, users build Wasm application from programming languages, and he can execute the Wasm binary as a unikernel on hypervisors. Muse provides WASI as an interface between kernel and application. We currently support WASI Preview 1. 
So how we can execute WASM in Unicorn? This slide shows the compile flow. First, we compile WASM binary to object file by our compiler. Next, we can link the generated object file with Unikernel and get kernel images. In this linking time, the invocation of WASI from WASM binary combines with WASI implementation in Muse. Finally, we execute the kernel image on bare, bare machine, which means without any other operating systems. This is how to execute WASM as a kernel. And the second component is WASCA. This is an ahead of time compiler for WASM. WASCA uses LLVM as a backend. The most important feature of WASCA is it leaves invocation of was unresolved. That means we can link the output of WASCA with any was implementation. So WASCA is not only for Muse. WASCA enables run WASM applications on various kernels. Uh, the last component is container DC Muse in Langwazi. Langwazi is a project under container D and Langwazi is a layer for running WASM runtime by container D. We make Muse support Langwazi. So as shown in the picture, container D is invoked from Kubernetes as a high level container runtime. And thanks to the container D sim, we can use WASMH or Muse as a low level container runtime. We will demonstrate this later. So this is our overview of system architecture. Users can run their WASM binary on Muse Unikernel. And this Unikernel can be used with, within the container ecosystem. This means that we can benefit high isolation and low overhead of the Unikernel without being aware that this is a Unikernel. Oh, uh, but what are the benefits of running WASM as a Unikernel? How is it different from running WASM as a user, uh, user process on conventional WASM runtimes? Let's think about running WASM on public cloud. Generally speaking, for security purposes, high isolation is required for workloads in public clouds. So we think running WASM on public cloud will require isolation by virtual machines. Actually, containers also require VMs because they share the host kernel. WASM runtimes also share the host kernel. WASM is known for its ability to execute code securely with sandboxed environment. However, in modern cloud environments, it has become common to isolate using virtual machines and not share kernels. Then the entire environment will be like this. WASM applications are executed on WASM runtimes, which run on the GET kernel, such as Linux. Despite the lightweight nature of WASM as an execution environment, it's accompanied by virtual machines, adding additional layers of complexity. This entails the overhead from virtualization. But with Muse, WASM applications run with dedicated, extremely thin guest kernel. So this architecture reduces the overhead from guest kernel. This allows WASM to run on virtual machines with minimal overhead. Moreover, thanks to the portability of WASM, users don't need to be aware that the application is running on a unikernel. That's why we think Muse will be the optimal choice for existing WASM on public cloud with high isolation. Now, we'll show the demo video of running, WASM, uh, running Muse via Kubernetes. Uh, okay, uh, first, the Kubernetes cluster has no pods. Here is the manifest of Muse pod. 
and apply it. For comparison, here is the manifest of what's on the edge part and apply it to. Then we have two parts of Muse and Wasm Edge. And we can access these parts via HTTP. Here are the responses. Yeah. And this is the performance evaluation of Muse and Wasm Edge. Muse run directly on KVM virtual machine, and Wasm Edge run on Linux on KVM virtual machine. So both uh, run on virtual machines. And uh, the benchmark result shows that uh, Muse is 30% faster than Wasm Edge. We think it's because Muse reduces the overhead from guest kernel. In this way, Muse demonstrates its effectiveness in optimizing uh, Wasm existing non virtual machines. And Muse and Wasker are open source projects. We publish them on GitHub. Please check out them, and we appreciate it if you give us stars for them. In conclusion, we are working on a project to run Wasm as a unikernel. We are developing Muse, a unikernel specialized for executing Wasm, Wasker, an AOT compiler of Wasm, and container dish in Muse. We think it will optimize execution environment for Wasm on public cloud with high isolation. Uh, thank you for listening. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's um, you can go back to the slides where you have your um, URLs so that people have a chance to um, to look at your links and your 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 QR code. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. Thanks. So so um we'll leave most of the questions to the to the end. But I just have a very um, you know, uh, something I, I just have to ask, you know. So um, you have demonstrated that you um, uh, thirty percent faster. How much smaller? Would you be able to uh, to to talk about that? You know, that's uh, uh sm smaller. Yes. Uh, so um, I would imagine the unit kernel is smaller than than say what image running on Linux, right? You know, the, in terms of image size. Uh, uh image size. Uh, image size. Uh, actually, uh, we uh we've not uh at, uh compare the kernel ima uh, image size, but... Uh, okay, uh, yeah. 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 I'm just curious, you know, that's... Um, maybe that's something um, that would be interesting to compare and also memory usage, right? Because those are the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, do additional uh, evaluation, yeah. And right. uh, the uh, this HTTP server is written in Rust and uh, compiling to a uh, Wasm and uh uh i think and it it was uh about uh 2 megabytes or uh 20 megabytes and yeah and but uh muse and uh wasca compiled the wasn't binary into an object file and uh the size is uh not so different uh almost the same but and uh the the object file and uh, we uh, link the object file and uh, Muse implementation and uh, make kernel image. But it it is also not so different. And uh, so the kernel implementation is about uh, a several a several kilobyte and okay. yeah, so this order. So yeah, very I think. The Muse implementation is very, very uh, thin and lightweight. In, right. Uh, yeah. Kernel kind of image. That's great. Yeah. That's uh, um, you know, um, because on the Linux side, there's uh, slim containers and you know things like that, which could make it, um, you know, but I don't think it's. I think it's still in the tens of megabytes. I may be wrong, but you know, but yeah, that's uh, regardless. That that'd be interesting to see those numbers. So, you know. Um, really um, impressed by your work and uh, uh, you know really appreciate the presentation